It's Monday, March 7th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And today we're going to do a short technical review overview of the Javelin anti-tank missile system, how it works. This short clip is brought to you from Air Source Military, demonstrating the effective use of this short-range anti-tank missile system. All right, fire when you're ready. Firing. <laughs> Boom! There you go. There you go. This is an unclassified open source discussion, and this is my primary reference for this discussion. Javelin Close Combat Missile System Medium, put out by the U.S. Army. See the link below, approved for public release. The Javelin Surface Attack Missile System was designed by Raytheon in the late 80s, right at the end of the Cold War, specifically to be used against Russian tanks marching across Europe. There's two basic components to this system, the CLU and the round itself. The CLU, or Command Launch Unit, which has all the sighting devices in it, is a reusable unit. The missile and the tube that carries the missile is a one-time use item only. Once you fire the missile, you discard the missile tube, or the round as they call it. The missile itself is a fire-and-forget optically guided missile system. The whole thing weighs about 50 pounds and it has a range of about 2,000 meters. We'll talk about top attack and direct attack modes and the different altitudes that the missile reaches. The missile, it takes about 14 seconds for the missile to reach that 2,000 meter range. So the missile itself is only flying through the air at about 300 plus miles per hour. It's got a two-stage launch motor a, a two-stage rocket motor in it, a launch motor, both of which are solid propellant, a, a launch motor, and then the flight motor. The whole thing is about one meter long. The CLU has both a day sight and a night sight, night vision sight, day sight capable of four times magnification. Night vision goggles go all the way up to a narrow focal range, up to 9.2 times magnification. Two batteries needed to operate this system. One is a disposable lithium sulfur dioxide battery to run the whole CLU unit, the clue as they call it. And that you can use that clue as a sighting device in the field, whether you're using the missile or not. You can use it. It's great for reconnaissance work, day or night reconnaissance work. Even after you fired the missile, you can continue to use the clue for this. And that non-disposable battery for that kind of function is good for about four hours. Once you need to use the missile itself, you need to cool the missile system and the guidance system using argon gas. And that BCU, the battery unit that has that cooling argon gas, that's only good for about four minutes. So once you fire up this missile and get it ready to fire, you've only got four minutes of coolant time to keep the system cool. And the system needs to remain within a cooler temperature and the cooler temperatures found over in Ukraine today are going to be beneficial to the operation of this system. In a hot desert environment, it can become problematic. So on the clue on the sighting device, it's got the day sight located right here, and it's got the night sight located right here, the larger lens right there, and an additional cooling unit for that lens. The BCU with the argon cooling is located right here on the round, and inside the missile, we have some basic sections. The guidance section is located up front. It's got a two-stage warhead, which we'll talk about in a moment, in the middle. These are stabilizing fins located in the middle. And then the aft section is the propulsion section of the two-stage solid propul propulsion motor and guidance fins and variable vectorable thrust. Let's take a more detailed look at this. So with the missile inside the tube, first you've got um, bumpers you can put on the front and rear. These missiles are relatively fragile. If you drop it in the field, you could disable this missile. It's got some fragile gimbals and technology in there. The seeker, the optically guided seeker head is right here in the, at the front of the missile. The warhead is a two-stage warhead. In order to counteract explosive reactive armor found frequently on tanks today, 
this has a precursor warhead which will fire off just prior to the missile or just as the missile is approaching the the target and this precursor will cause the explosive armor on the vehicle to detonate which then opens the door for the main warhead to penetrate the vehicle and the main warhead here is uh, a heat warhead a high explosive anti-tank warhead more on that in a minute and how that works then we have the fixed wings which just stabilize the missile like um like fletching on an arrow and then we have the two-stage rocket motor here which includes the flight motor is this forward section which gets at the 2000 meters range and this longer motor is the launch motor which just pops the missile out of the tube in a low signature sort of format just to get the missile out of the way of the operator before the main flight motor takes off. So unlike the Stinger miss missile, it doesn't have a separate motor that ejects the missile out of the tube. It has that launch motor built in to the missile. And then back here is the stabilizing fins. These fins are movable and are guided by the guidance, electronic guidance system located here. And the thrust is variable as well out the nozzle to allow this missile to follow the guidance system into its target. The CLU targeting device communicates with the, with the electronic guidance unit inside the missile to designate the target, keep that information, and follow it all the way into its target, making it truly a fire and forget missile system. Now a little bit more about the main warhead located right here. High explosive anti-tank armor, it, this is a shaped charge. It's, this, this is primarily relying on inertia to impact the armor. But in this shaped charge is first a trigger located right on the tip of the, of the uh, warhead. And that trigger, once it hits the target, detonates this detonator here, which lights off this explosive here, shown in yellow, number five. And that explosive blows the gas back into this hollow section of the head of the warhead and acts like a blow dart and just <laughs> knocks that high inertia or that relatively low inertia from the 300 or so miles an hour, but blow darts it right into through the armor of the vehicle. There are two very important different modes of operating this missile, top attack mode or direct attack mode. Both of these have about a 2000 meter range. Top attack mode is designed to get the missile up and then fire straight down onto the armored vehicle onto the top of the armor, which is presumably less protected than the rest of the vehicle but that's also where that explosive armor plating is located so for the missile itself remember the launch the uh, launch motor just knocks the missile out of the tube and then it falls a little bit as we saw in that opening clip and then the flight motor takes off and it launches it up to an altitude of about 160 meters goes on altitude hold and then does its terminal arrival straight on down or fairly well straight down onto the target at about 2,000 mile or 2,000 meter range. Direct attack mode flies at a much lower altitude. It only pops the missile up to about 60 meters and then directly drives it into the target. An example of direct attack mode is if the vehicle that you're trying to shoot at is underneath a protective, like a hangar or, a, or some kind of a protective barrier, you want to attack that missile directly through the side of this barrier, you're gonna to have to go direct mode. The other way that direct, the other mode that works great, that has to be used, that you have to use direct mode for is helicopters. Yeah, you can hit helicopters with this thing in direct mode. You need to hit them on the side or on the, on the front, but you don't wanna go over the top entry because the rotors on the helicopter will throw the optical guidance of the guided missile off. So direct attack mode for helicopter use.
So with only a 2,000 meter range, this you, you will obviously be in visual range of your target. So you need to be located up on a little bit higher terrain so you can look down on the battlefield and then scan the battlefield using the CLU searching for your targets. Whether it's day or night, you can convert this light energy into infrared imaging through the system. You start with a wide field of view, locate the target, go to your narrow, zoom in on your narrow field of view. Then you'll pick up a couple of tracking gates located right here. When those tracking gates begin to flash, that means that the unit is locking on to that particular target. You'll pick up a couple of crosshairs where you're going to want to find the center of mass of that target and then fire. So that's a quick overview of the Javelin anti-tank weapon system. It's a very expensive system. Sometimes it costs more than the vehicle that you're trying to destroy, but in a military situation, that could be priceless. Thanks for your support. See you here. All right, fire when you're ready. Firing. <laughs>